welcome back second graders. So we are working on changing landforms. We're on chapter three, lesson three today. We are gonna be doing activities one and two and we are going to be skipping activity three. So in the last lesson, we investigated erosion with a model and we were using the plate of cotton balls and the cotton balls were representing pieces of rock eroding off of a mountain. So what did we learn through our investigation of the mountain model? You guys can go ahead and pause this video and answer the question by writing it in your packet, talking to somebody at home, or thinking about it in your head. So when I think about how I would answer this question, um, something that I learned through the investigation of the mountain model was that small changes are hard to see. So when I was taking just one cotton ball or two cotton balls off of the plate, you couldn't really notice a huge change. Um, but something else that I did learn is that small changes can add up to a bigger change over time, and that is going to be an easier change to notice. So over time, if I had removed like 20 or 30 cotton balls from the plate, that would be a change that I would notice, but it just takes a bunch of small changes over time to really be able to notice it. So remember that reference books are used to find specific information. We'll use this book to learn more about the changes that happen in the real world. So in your packets, you have a worksheet that looks like this called Gathering Evidence of Change. And so I'm going to just read the directions to you really quickly. So first, we're going to use the handbook of land and water to get evidence that many small changes can add up to a big change. We're going to choose two landforms from the book to read about, and then we're going to record those in the first column of the table below right here where it says name of landform. Then we're going to record information from the book in the second column right here. Okay, and we're gonna be recording small changes and big changes with that landform. And then in the last column right here, you're gonna circle yes or no to answer the question, would you be able to see a big change in one day? So we're gonna be looking at page 11 in our book. So I'm gonna read it really quickly. And this is focusing on beaches. Beaches are landforms made up of loose material, such as sand, gravel, rocks, or mud. We find beaches where land meets a body of water. Beaches are usually on low land. The edge of the land is often called the coast. So from pages 11 and 12, it is about beaches, but they do not have evidence about small changes leading up to a big change, so I know that I need to continue reading. Okay, so on the next page, page 13, the heading says beaches change slowly. So that gives me an idea that it's going to be explaining a little bit more about small changes leading up to a big change. So let's go ahead and read the page. Beaches form because of erosion. Rivers and streams carry bits of rock and sand down from mountains. The sand builds up slowly to form a beach. Erosion can also make beaches smaller. Waves hit the beach and carry, carry sand away. The diagram below shows how this happens. Waves hit a beach. The waves erode on the beach. Each wave carries a little bit of sand. As more and more waves carry sand away, the beach becomes smaller. The little changes made by each wave add up to a big change. So now we're gonna look at page 14 in our books. And this page, the heading says, how beaches change fast. So they got, that gives me an idea about a way that a beach might change quickly, but this won't help us understand small changes adding up to big ones. So I already know I don't really need to read this page to answer the question in my um, chart. Okay, so now let's look back at page 13. So again, we know just from what I had read before that this is going to be the page I'm going to use when I'm filling out that chart in my packet because this is going to help me figure out how small changes can add up to a bigger change. So we've already looked at the diagram and the captions to find evidence, um, but when you guys are doing this on their own, it's also important not just to read the pages, but also to look at the pictures, look at the captions, and try and make sense of what's happening in those. Okay. So I'm going to make my screen smaller so I can show you how we're gonna fill out this chart. So the first column is the name of the landform. So for our example we just did, I'm going to write beach because that is the landform that we are focusing on. 
So now we're gonna think about how did the landform change? So first we're gonna think about that small change. Our small change was pieces of eroded rock are going down the mountains and the waves are carrying those pieces of rock to make like the sandy bottom. So pieces of rock, eroded rock from mountains flow into the ocean making sand. Okay, and our bigger change, and I'm just gonna move this up a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. Maybe it won't let me, so we'll just keep it like that. Our big change is that over time, the ocean or the shore gets smaller. Okay. Um, the last thing is, would you be able to see this big change in one day? So when I'm thinking about these little pieces of rock, this is not going to happen one day. It's something where as the, sh the water is flowing, as the waves are going, um, that is what's creating the shore to get smaller. So it's going to take a long time. So I'm going to put no here. Okay. So now you guys are going to go to the YouTube video for the handbook of land and water, and you are going to listen to the story again. You're going to choose two landforms to complete the worksheet in your packet. And then we will come back for the second activity after you guys have completed that. Hi guys, welcome back. So you guys should have just completed the table using the handbook of land and water to help you answer about how small changes can lead up to a bigger change. So really quick, we're just gonna discuss the following question. What evidence from the book supports the idea that small changes can add up to a big change that is easy to notice? So I want you to go ahead and pause this video and just answer this question using what you already know from the book. You can write it in your packet, talk to somebody at home, or think about it in your head. So when I'm thinking about the book, um, when I'm thinking about those small changes, I'm thinking about those tiny pieces of rock eroding from a mountain and flowing into the ocean. And then the waves are carrying these tiny pieces of rock to the shore. So I'm not gonna notice a few extra pieces of sand on the shore, um, but as this happens more and more, over time, more sand is going to get deposited onto the shore and then it's going to eventually make the shore smaller. So that is a bigger change that is more easy to notice. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to activity two, which is writing about change. So in your packets, you have these two questions and we're going to work on answering these questions based on what we've learned about change already. So let's read through the questions together. So question one says, when one small piece of rock erodes from a landform, would you notice a change to the landform? Why or why not? The second question asks, how can erosion cause a big change to a landform? So I want you guys to just pause the video and answer these two questions in your packet. Um, if you do not have a packet, then you can just talk to somebody at home or just pause the video and think about how you would answer that question. Okay, so we're going to discuss some of the responses to the questions right now. So question one, when one small piece of rock erodes from a landform, would you notice a change to the landform? Why or why not? So if I think back to the mountain model where we use the cotton balls, um, we did not notice when we took just one or two cotton balls off of that plate. So that kind of also leads me to think that one small piece of rock coming off of a mountain is not going to be a noticeable change because it's something that's really small. And also we remember that it takes a lot of time for that to happen too. So um, that is why I would probably not notice a small piece of rock eroding off of a landform. The second question is, how can erosion cause a big change to a landform? So over time, um, these smaller changes are going to add up to a bigger, more noticeable change. So for example, um, with the mountain model, as we were taking off a cotton ball, when we took one or two pieces off, we didn't notice it. But if we took 20 or 30 ball cotton balls off of that plate, it would be a much more noticeable change. So again, that's just going to show how small changes can add up to a bigger change that's more noticeable. Um, also, if we're thinking back to our beach example, uh, again, if we had just a few pieces of sand washing onto the shore, we probably would not notice that. 
but over time, as more sand deposits onto that shore, it's going to make the shore smaller, and that's going to be a change that we will actually be able to notice. So the key concept that we've learned from this chapter is that many small changes that are hard to notice can add up to a bigger change that is easy to notice. We've also been thinking about scale as how big or small something is. Geologists think about erosion at different scales when tiny pieces of rock cause a big change to a landform. Geologists also think about erosion at different scales when they think about how fast or slow erosion occurs. Okay, so that is the end of lesson three. So we will see you guys back for our very last lesson for this chapter.